liquid fuel is being injected inside the gas turbine engine. So you can imagine here that air is flowing in and that we're adding to this air our liquid fuel, breaking it up into droplets, thereby forming a spray. We then want the spray to evaporate and combust and that's how we really power our uh, uh, aircraft gas turbine engine. The summer program of the Center for Turbulence Research was started in 1987, the year that the CTR was founded. And the idea was to reach out to the fluid mechanic community and the turbulence research community in particular. And uh, the mechanism for sharing the data uh, was that the, we had uh, access to uh, the Cray supercomputers at NASA Ames, and we had generated a lot of valuable data in canonical flows, and we invited people to write proposals on probing this data to test their hypotheses or models of uh, turbulent flow in, in that kind of environment. As the computers get more powerful and can do more things, we are asking them sort of to do more and more complicated problems, more and more realistic geometries, more and more complicated uh, chemistry and stuff for the combustion problems. The project that uh, I'm involved in is, uh, has to do with noise reduction. So you can think of this one as an idealized version of, uh, of a jet engine. But the important thing that we're interested in here is the sound that it produces. And there is quite a bit of sound. You see that in these gray uh, contours that radiate off. These are, these are sound waves that make the, the noise, uh, the, the jet, of course, very noisy. Some of you maybe have seen the, the, the chevron patterns on a, on, a, on a jet engine. That's a passive device. Nothing is moving there. But by shaping this nozzle, you can avoid certain noise generating structures. The expertise here in terms of computational sciences, applied mathematics, and uh, turbulence is, is fairly unique. And during this month, every two years in the summer, we have a chance to really synergize between different fields, different groups, and, and usually uh, great new ideas come out of, uh, of this exercise. Normally you design something, something goes wrong, and you redesign it. The cost of des redesign is very large. Typically engine development, an engine, it costs about a billion dollars to develop an engine. So if you have to redesign parts of it, the cost could be another 200, 300 million dollars. I'm here looking particularly at combustion instabilities. Uh, these happen inside rocket engines, inside aeroplane engines, and they can cause an enormous amount of damage. Now there's a lot of energy in there, and again, it doesn't take much of that energy to be converted into sound in order to make so much vibration that you shake the engine apart. If you're on the aeroplane at the time, that is a very, very bad thing. So what we want to avoid is doing design by trial and error. We want to work out exactly which bits of the injector and the fuel system we need to change ahead of time rather than at the end of the design process after we've spent hundreds of millions of dollars. And the way we do that will be to essentially use the big supercomputers here but use them very cleverly and that's why the CTR program is so good. It brings people with lots of different expertise from around the world together at the same time. There are those that deal with hand calculations to those that deal with big supercomputing calculations. Um, and when you get all those people together, they work out really clever solutions to difficult problems such as this one. So very good understanding of turbulent flows can be used effectively in terms of increasing fuel efficiency, reduction of noise from overhead aircraft, and reduction of environmentally hazardous pollutants, for example. It could be applied in weather prediction climate modeling, so it has geophysical applications, but also in, in biological applications, even blood flow next to beating heart is uh, turbulent in some sections of the human body. If you look at the fuel consumption in the engine, over the last, say, about 30 years, fuel consumption has reduced by about 20% by using better tools, better ways to analyze things. Looking at regions of the flow field, which generates higher losses, reduce the entropy generation, and improve the lifts on the airfoil. That's, that's what we have done. If you ask Boeing or how they design airplanes now, it, it will involve fewer wind tunnel tests because a lot of it can be done by computer design. So what we're seeing here at the summer school is trying to eat into that list of things that still need to be done in the wind tunnel so that we can do edge of the flight envelope kind of computations and get uh, a better computational prediction of the entire 
kinds of conditions that the plane is going to see at, at all modes of flight. 